simple but elegant. Hi, I'm Captain Eddie Castle and welcome to my shop. Today's project, a paper holder for the workstation or the desk or your friend's workstation or your friend's desk. And it's real easy to make, use a lot of the same techniques we developed on the card holder but with a little bit of a twist. And it makes a nice companion piece too if you're doing one for your desk or your buddy's desk who you really got to dig at a little bit, right? You want to know how to do it? You know the routine. All you have to do is watch. The way I have this set up is just a simple vise, a, a, a four inch from, of all places, Upper Freight. My two and three eighths inch hole saw that I use for doing bangles. I cock the piece up on about a 15, 18, whatever degree angle and then I just drill right down. It just about catches the corner of the piece and I drill about an inch and a quarter deep and that's all you get on a bit. It's about an inch and a quarter deep and that preps the block for the next step. Once we have the piece prepped, that means the slotted hole is drilled and the bottom is sanded with some rough paper to be truly flat. Then we're going to glue it onto a waste block and then put a dummy piece up at the top. And I put a little drop of CA on it this time to bring that piece up. And that puts it between centers. Now, between centers is where I like to be on most things because it lets me have more control over the piece without a fear of knocking it off the glue block. And always between centers, even on bowls when you're roughing them in, get a second point. Otherwise, you have it hanging out there and you put too much leverage. More guys that I know have had their bell rung because they freed up a piece, put too much pressure on it, off it came, bounced off the ways, and then their head. And that's what happened to me one time. So I didn't just read about it, I experienced it. So we have it like that. I'm going to put you in a different position, and then we're going to start shaping this thing up. You're now in a pretty good spot. I'm going to crank the lathe up at about 800 RPMs. This is just to knock the corners off. bit of tape that was on the piece. I'm going to crank it up now to about um, 1200, 1300 RPMs. Real happy the way it's moving and shaping up. Going for the gold all the way up. Why? Because when I come across those points, I don't want to knock them off. Slow speed would knock off those corners. High speed, hopefully I don't get it. Light, light cut. You don't want to find any surprises. Yeah, by the way, if in doubt, sharpen up. You don't want to do this with a dull tube. Head to the shape a little bit. That's your, that's your waist block. Number two, the dummy. Why is it a dummy? Because it's going to get chewed up and it doesn't know it. I've now changed to an Ellsworth. This is a Deep Blue Ellsworth by Jerry Glazer.
ask yourself, why didn't you just hog in there and get some wood? It's a marathon, not a sprint. And I want it to come out well. I'm just about round. I can hear it. And I want to take my time and take light, light cuts. That's going to be my final dimension. I'm going to rub a bevel. That's where my cut starts. gets too heavy I just step out a little bit. Then I go back where the step was, clean it up. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit, okay? While I was away, or while you were away, I went ahead and finished this up. I passed a little 220 paper on it to knock down some, some spots so I can see if I have any tears in here that have to be fixed with the tool. I don't have any back here. I've got some small ones, like right here. That's going to be a little tail. Right here. Now all that means is those have to be cuts to clean it up, or a lot of sanding. I prefer the cuts than the sanding. But you can see how the edges stayed true by bringing the speed up. See how nice and true those stayed? That's real critical. That's why I brought the speed all the way up. We'll clean up a little bit of fuzz in there. But first, let's finish shaping this thing. Again, the speed is going to be at max on the uh, middle gear. Uh, so I'm a little bit over 2,000. Going to get my tool rest position. Oh, you really should do this when the lathe's not running. Eh, I forget. Again, I just touched up some edge. I'm going to get rid of my dummy. Why now? Because pretty much everything now is going to be fine work, not a lot of pressure, not a lot of heavy cuts, so I don't need to be between centers. With that being said, we back the tool rest off a little. Well, that was quick, wasn't it? Okay. I know I'm good to about here. So I'm going to close my tool up. Let's get this terminology. Close means almost dead vertical across the faces. And then I'm going to read the wood. And I'm rubbing bevel and I'm going to open the tool a little bit by cranking it. Open means cranking it back. Until I get a cut. handle so you know you're swinging it. Got a bump right there. Do you see it? Let me get you in a little bit closer here so you can see what I'm talking about. When I just changed right here and moved my handle, I created a bump right there. I'm going to come back and read it. There. I'm going to change the attitude of the tool. There we go. Come back and pick it up again. Remember to swing the handle. That's what makes the cut work. There are no flat spots and curves. That is a true curve. No flat spots. I don't have to sand any ridges out because I, I swung the handle. When I picked up here to here, I swung the handle the same angle as I did the cut. 
so that my bevel rubbed all the way through and I was able to, to, to get a nice smooth pattern, uh, curve. Now, there are ways to do it by rotating the tool. Practice that after you learn how to curve it, okay? Now, I'm ready to clean this thing up with a little bit of sandpaper. But, I think I'll bring the speed down just a little bit. One of the beauties working with exotics like Coca Bolo is this is 320 paper. I'm going to go ahead and wet sand it just with water. That's all I've got in here. There's less dust, and for some people, Coca Bolo dust is harmful. It'll make you regret turning it the next day, but if you control the dust, you're okay. Wet sanding is one way. Look, you get a nice slurry instead of dust. The other way, since I'm stepping off the 320, <clears throat> and let me mention that the 320 is done, Take the grit off the wood. If you want a super slick, beautiful finish, with the finish on it and just wax on it, take the grit off between coats. Now, I'm going to go to my sanding wax. Then I get a lot of questions about this product. A lot. This product does not have grit in it. The grit's on the sandpaper. This is just a vehicle or a lubricant, just like the water is. Now, this bowl is extremely dirty with junk that's fallen into it, but it will give me an idea of how the piece will finish. And what can I do with this? Okay, I'm at 400 grit. I'm going to be looking at it to see if there's any tears or grain poles from either improper tool use, slightly dull, uh, a bad move, a defect in a wood, half a dozen other things can give me a grain defect. So with this, I've just sealed all the cavities, I've made the piece more uniform, I've got it down to 400 grit and I have applied something to the outside that will show me what the piece will look like when finished. Now, that's what this piece will look like with the complete coat on. I can see I have no grain tears, no poles, no rips, no bumps, no runs, no errors, no one left on base. This is just a beautiful piece of wood. When you look at it, it's almost, it'd be almost sinful to do any decorating or anything on this piece. It's base heavy, it's going to be really, really lovely. Don't worry about all that junk in there. We're going to, I'll show you how to clean it out in a minute. But at 400 grit, that's great. And I don't see any lines in it from sanding. The finish looked really good at four. I want to just take it a couple of notches more. So I'm going to go through 600. Now, I didn't use wax. I used water. Why? Because you don't need the wax for all the coats. You can back off of it and just use water. But I'm still using a lubricant because I don't want the dust and I want a good clean cut. So I'm getting this, this little fine slurry, instead of dust up my nose or into the dust collector or wherever it goes. And I'm sanding the piece. As I move from 600 to 800, I'm going to go ahead and clean it up, remove that extra grit. 
a master wood turner told me one time that and he is one of the world's finest uh, wood turners told me that using the same pan of water with the grit or not cleaning it off just means you're moving the rocks imagine it being the rocks from the 400 onto the 600 so when you're cleaning with a 600 you've got a few rocks of 400 eaten in and destroying your finish then you go to the 8 and it's not going to remove the scratches from the 4 etc and since his work a simple little one hour project sells for thousands of dollars I tend to go along with his thought with the wood as beautiful as this I'm, I'm an 800 grit it is gorgeous I'm just going to use some of the soft high, sh high gloss hut with a very clean paper to remove towel. it from the the uh, dead wood the glue block just like with the business card holder I'm at an angle coming in this way that means the bottom would be more concave than flat across same cloth make sure it's clean grab the piece if you do it just with your hand you might burn the wax or your hand That's what you'll end up with. We'll clean that up. There you have it. That's the finished piece. It's a paper holder. Now, somebody that types, works at their office or whatever, will really appreciate that. Now, a couple of things. Right off the bat. Make sure that grit, that slot is clean so when they do this, they don't end up a little ring around the collar. Okay. Number two, it doesn't need to be ornamented, but it does need to be base heavy. The ones made by the drug companies have got lead shot in them so that they are base heavy. You're going to do it with good old fashioned wood. Number three, or C, the base can be larger. You can turn an ornamented base with maybe an OG or something on it and then stick this down on top of it reduce the amount of big stock you use and make it even prettier it's up to you you can also use Corian for that base that's four or D and lastly give it away don't make it just for you give it away it's only a 15 minute project right oh well like my wife and kids say, my 15 minutes is a whole lot different than their 15 minutes. <laughs> and after all, if you're in the shop, you're in the shop and you're in the shavings. What else matters? I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. Hope you had a good time because I've been making shavings. Take care now. Yeah. That was important and I didn't clean it out.